As always, we welcome you to St. Ambrose as together we begin our Lenten journey on this Ash Wednesday. Our Mass intention is in thanksgiving for our amazing volunteers of St. Ambrose Parish family. Our opening hymn is number 665, Hosea. Let us rise and join together in singing our opening, number 665. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Tonight, um, things are a little different from our usual Sunday pattern. In Orthodox Jewish families, the youngest child asks at the Seder, why is this night different from all other nights? Well, this night is different because the whole emphasis is on repentance and um, making the wearing of ash is a sign of repentance and so the penitential act uh, which usually happens here uh, is sort of taken later with the blessing and imposition of ashes so dear friends let us pray Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, 
not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the, broom, groom, the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep and say, spare, O Lord, your people and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stern to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is, be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. Give, when you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, as your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not let the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear brothers and sisters, God is good and all the time. So I choose this evening to begin with our take home. And our take home today is this. Are we going to go through Lent? That is, it comes and goes. Or is Lent going to go through us? That means being transformed at the end of it. The traditional practices of Lent that we just heard about in the Gospel reading, and you can see them there. Prayer, fasting, and alms giving. Though somebody told me, Father, that one, it seems, pray fast and give. <laughs> Prayer, fasting, and alms giving. So it puts before us three traditional ways of growing in our relationship with the Lord. So there are three pathways that help us to turn more fully to the Lord. And actually, they are just, it's just one pathway with the three layers. Because prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, they are so closely interconnected. When Lent comes, we often think of uh, fasting as giving up of certain foods and drink. But more broadly, Fasting is a saying no to, what, to whatever may be an obstacle or an impediment to our growing in our relationship with the Lord. So it is saying no to any form of self-centeredness. So it is, it is more than uh, abstaining from certain foods and drink. So you can imagine or uh, the church tells us uh, on Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, no eating of meat. But there are some people in some parts of the world whereby they can't afford even that meat. 
So to tell them, fast from meat, which is not always in their menu, doesn't make sense to them, right? So that is why Pope Francis uh, gave more, more recommendations. But apart from fasting from uh, food and drink, we can also fast from other, uh, other things which seem to be uh, obstacles or impediments to our growing closer to the Lord. So he says, we can fast also from anger and be filled with uh, patience. We can fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. We can fast from being pessimistic and be filled with hope. We can fast from complaining and contemplate simplicity. We can fast from bitterness and be filled with joy. We can fast from selfishness and be more compassionate to others. And we can fast from grudges and be reconciled. So apart from food and drink, those are other recommendations uh, from uh, Pope Francis, which will help us to draw closer to the Lord. So that saying no to any form of self-centeredness is another way of saying yes, or uh, saying a yes to a, a greater yes to the Lord. And this yes to the Lord finds its expression in prayer. And a yes to others, to the Lord who is present in the other human being. And this finds its expression in arms giving. So a giving of ourselves in the service of others. Therefore, in and through these three practices that Jesus put before us, we respond to the opening calling of the first reading from the prophet Joel. It says, come back to me with all your hearts. The Mother Church gives us 40 days of Lent to respond to this call of the Lord. And we are setting out, beginning today, on this 40-day journey, not as an isolated individual, but together as a family or as a church. So this journey will bring us to the wonderful feast of Easter. And hopefully, we will have lived Lent in such a way that when Easter Sunday comes, we will be ready to renew our baptismal promises from our hearts. So just as the, the catechumens, for the catechumens, Lent is an intense period of preparation for their baptism at Easter. So also for all of us who are baptized, it is a period when we prepare ourselves to recommit to our baptism at Easter. So we have this all this time, 40 days. For some people, it will be quick, like an about turn. But for others, it will be like a U-turn. So, but the Lord has given us the opportunity to make use of this. So may we give our best during this Lenten observance, so that we may come out at the end of it all, refined and renewed. So remember your takeaway home. Are we going to go through Lent, or Lent is going to go through us? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Please stand with us. Let us humbly ask our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. Let us pray. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So to receive the ashes, Monsignor Mike will be here, then Deacon Earl will be there, and I will be there. So it's all of us. So you come like this, then also you come like this. When, when I'm done there and he's done there, we'll, we'll come and assist here too.
Dear friends, let's offer our prayers now uh, with devotion and confidence. For the family of God, as we begin our Lenten journey, may we grow in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, pray for For world peace, for those suffering from war and for those serving in the armed forces, we pray to the Lord. Lord, pray for your for the continued conversion of all gathered here, that we will turn from sin and turn toward God's life and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for our St. Ambrose family, for whom this Mass is celebrated, may God keep us in his loving arms, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you and by you be brought to completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May God accept the sacrifice of your hands and praise and glory of His name. Glory to God in the good of all His holy church. May the sacrament we have received, excuse me, as we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together, Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Ambrose, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by Jesus' own divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let's stand and pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, any of you who may not have uh, been here Sunday, uh, we have some bulletins uh, from Sunday still waiting to be taken home, and they have some uh, added information about the season of Lent that you may be interested in. Uh, also, uh, on the table at, just behind those windows back there, you'll find some Lenten uh, reading material that you're welcome to uh, pick up and take home with you. Uh, if you uh, need something to read during Lent. Um, on Friday, uh, we have Mass at 9.15, followed by uh, Adoration. And uh, then on Friday evening at 7, correct, we have the Stations of the Cross. So uh, just so you know. Did you get anything? All right. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks to God. Amen. Let us join together in singing our closing song, number 114, Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days. 114. Mm -hmm.